Mortgage rates are now seven to 8%, almost triple what they were at the same time last year. This has caused demand in the housing market to collapse and many people are claiming that the housing market bubble has officially burst. Sure, in some markets we've seen prices drop 5%, maybe 10% here and there, but we still haven't seen massive drop-offs like so many people predicted a year ago. In this video, I wanna answer exactly what's going on here and walk you through the data to show you why prices haven't dropped yet and what they're probably gonna do over the next couple of months. Also, for any of you who are currently in the market for a home, I have some advice for you in how to navigate this crazy market. And make sure you stick around to the very end because I'm gonna answer the question of whether or not it makes sense to rent or buy a home right now. First, I wanna show you guys some data and I wanna make sure that everybody's on the same page and knows from the data what's happening in the housing market currently. First, let's take a look at pending sales and all this data is from redfin.com. And you can see that we're down over 35% year over year in pending sales. This is the largest change, the largest drop that we've seen, except for briefly during the pandemic. And you can see the data from Redfin goes back eight years, and by far this is the lowest dip, even greater than what we saw in April of 2020. So pretty crazy stuff. And again, this is driven by mortgage rates and the Fed increasing the federal funds rate which of course has that follow on effect to increase mortgage rates. And at seven and 8% interest rates, when people are used to three and 4% rates is really problematic. And this is why you're seeing demand just dry up in the market. And taking a look at the mortgage payments year over year, again, you can just see here from 2020 when average mortgage payments were around $1,500, 2021 with all that home appreciation, it went up, but it wasn't, skyrocketing because home prices went up, but mortgage rates were still really low. And then you can see the red line in 2022. I mean, we've we've added a thousand dollars to the average mortgage payment over you know the last year, year and a half, which is just absolutely crazy. For, to buy the same exact home, you're paying now a thousand dollars more on average, and all of that extra money is just going straight to the bank. It's not buying you a bigger house or a better house same exact house, just costs a lot more. And probably one of the most important things to understand here with regards to what's happening in the market is that yes, we're seeing demand absolutely plummet, the largest drop in demand that we've seen at least over the last eight years, even greater than in 2020 in the, during the pandemic. But what we're not seeing is a massive increase in supply. And in fact, we're seeing the opposite. We're seeing supply drop down below what we would expect. And this chart here really illustrates that. So the number of new listings you can see here, uh, of course in gray in 2020, we saw a massive dip here, but then it, it came back to about normal by the fall. And here in blue, you can see 2021, the pretty normal curve where you see a massive drop over the winter because housing is seasonal, but over the summer months, you're seeing really strong and consistent listings. And then what we're seeing here in red with 2022, you can see these listings just really start to drop and fall off a cliff. And all of this started happening around May or June, a couple months after rates increased. Uh, and you know what I think is happening here is just people don't wanna list their homes because they know if they list their home and they sell it, they're gonna have to go buy another home. And nobody wants to trade in you know, a normal three or 4% mortgage to buy the same house or you know, maybe spend a little bit more on a house to get a slightly bigger home, but then take on a seven or 8% mortgage because then you're just paying out the nose for interest, especially when, we're, when you're used to such a low interest rate. And honestly, this is the situation that so many people find themselves right now, where you would expect people over the course of their lifetime, on average, Americans stay in a home for about seven years before moving out or upgrading homes. So you'd expect on average, there's a, a fair amount of people who are moving from, let's say an entry level home with two or three bedrooms, moving into a three or four bedroom home. And then people in those three or four bedrooms, maybe moving into a slightly bigger home, either with more rooms or you know, a little bit bigger of a yard as their income starts to increase. This is a very normal cycle of housing, but we're not seeing those people be able to make those transitions because, you know, the houses that they would transition into and upgrade into are now so much more expensive 
first of all, the price of the homes. And then also the debt, the cost of the debt is so much more expensive through the mortgage rates that people are just refusing to do that. And so because of that, we're seeing a massive drop in listings because people are just refusing to sell their homes because either they don't want to or more, more likely they just can't right now because they can't afford to get into a bigger home. You know, and, and honestly, a lot of people probably can't afford to buy the home that they're currently living in right now because it would be too expensive uh, it'd be too expensive for them to afford. And really what all of this is resulting in is a massive increase in supply. And so despite the fact that fewer people are listing their homes, the buyers have just dropped out of the market even faster than that. And so we're seeing the average months of supply starting to tick up and increase. You can see here that we are at 3.1 months of supply available on the market, which is one month greater than last year one entire month, so a 50% increase in supply. And that we're significantly higher right now than we were even in, in 2020. So really this is, the, this is the net impact of all of this. We're just seeing supply start to increase and we're seeing homes stay on the market for longer than they used to. Now I think the good homes are still going quickly and many of you have probably seen that in your local markets, but it's the average homes, you know, the, the run of the mill home that you would you walk into a neighborhood and you know, 50, 60% of homes are very similar quality, very similar fit and finishes, just an average home. Those are the homes that are suffering the most. A premium home, really nice home that, that is really exciting, has either like a new kitchen or is in a great area, those are still going quickly. But the average home is just sitting on the market a significantly longer amount of time than they used to be, especially during 2021. Okay, now that we're all on the same page with the data and we're all clear what's happening at the national level, remember the housing market is regional, but this is on average what's happening at the national level, we can answer that question of why haven't home prices fallen yet? So this is a great article here from Redfin where their economists are answering some of these key questions. And this one here is really pertinent to us. Mortgage rates have more than doubled over the last 12 months, but why haven't home prices fallen? And this third one here is, is really answers it well. Pricing is very nuanced right now though. Even if we could track sale prices in real time, they still wouldn't be falling as much as we would expect. Home sales are down more than 30% from a year ago, but new listings are down almost 20% because prospective sellers are spooked by high mortgage rates too, and a lot of them are staying put. The pullback in supply is keeping upward pressure on prices. There aren't enough homes on the market to give buyers total control. So I just wanna emphasize this sentence here again. The pullback in supply is keeping upward pressure on prices. So that's really what's going on here. Remember, uh, for any of you who've taken uh, Economics 101, you know the supply demand curve and graphs. And because we're still seeing a low supply, even though demand has fallen off, we're not seeing prices reduce at the same time because that low supply is keeping upward pressure on prices. If we ever see, like if you think back to 2008, right? We had a massive dump of supply onto the market because people were going to, into foreclosure and they had to sell their homes. And so because of that massive increase in homes on the market, prices just absolutely collapsed and fell. But we're not seeing that now because even if people are in financial troubles, so many people have equity in their homes that they could sell their home, pay off all their debt, and then either start renting or move into a smaller home or move in with their friends or family. So that's why we're not seeing a massive decrease in price yet. And I just wanna be clear with when I say yet, because it's definitely going to happen. And in many markets, we actually are seeing it. In many markets, we're seeing five to 10% drops already, which is significant in and of itself. So. It is happening and it's going to continue happening over the course of the next six to 12 months. The housing market and the real estate market take a long time to adjust to prices. Sellers are still out there trying to list their very average, very basic home, you know, way above market value, expecting that it's going to increase 20%, uh, you know, just this year, which again was true this time a year ago, but it's definitely not true right now. And sellers are just, you know, most people just don't follow this stuff this closely. And because of that, they're not really aware of what's happening in the market day to day. 
And so this is why it's a really good, really important reason why you get a great real estate agent who does understand and look at this data and understands what's happening specifically in the local market that you're in. Okay, so then they answer, when will home prices fall year over year? In the next six to 12 months, prices are likely to fall year over year, possibly in double digits in some areas. They'll still be higher than pre-pandemic levels, but a lot of homeowners will be unhappy that the value of their home has gone down. Some builders are already offering new homes in bulk to investors at discounted rates of 10 to 15% off what they had hoped to get. They probably planned pricing six months ago, and now those homes are nearing completion and builders are waiting, are willing to take a loss to get rid of them. Businesses that sell homes like builders, investors, and iBuyers are much quicker than individual homeowners to react to changes in the market. So this is a sign that home prices more broadly are about to come down. So translation there is that the massive companies, the national builders that are out there that projected pricing six months, maybe a year in the future, are now understanding that the market has shifted and so they are proactively lowering the prices of those homes. And individual sellers, again, you know, they have a lot of emotion tied into their homes, into their properties, and so they are much slower to react to these market changes, but really this is kind of like the canary in the coal mine, if you will, that large professional firms and institutional investors have already recognized this change is coming, and so they're pricing that in, and then eventually that will trickle down to the majority of sellers who are just individual families who are selling their homes. All right, so thank you all who stuck around this long through the video. Remember at the beginning, I told you I would answer whether or not it makes sense to rent or buy right now. And honestly, I think it's really situational dependent. If you are looking to buy a home and stay there for the next 10 or 15 years, I think now is still a fantastic time to buy because if you think about it, even if prices come down 10 or 15%, within three or four years, inevitably prices will rebound. And by the time you're looking to sell your home in 10 or 15 years, you're going to have massive amounts of equity in the home. And again, it's really hard to time the market because ideally, right, everybody wants to, wants to buy at the, at the bottom of the valley, but the, the truth is that nobody really knows when that is. And so if you are in it for the long term, I would say it's definitely, you know, if you can find a good home that you like for a good price, then it would make sense to buy right now. But if you are really confident that prices are gonna continue to go down, which I personally think they're going to do, and you haven't found that perfect home that you love for the right price that you can afford, it definitely would make a lot of sense to rent right now. And I think the market's gonna be vastly different a year from now. And so if it were me personally, and I was in the market to buy a home, I probably would rent for, you know, put down a one year lease and just continue to be very diligent looking at the market and waiting for that right home to pop up at the right time, uh, at the right price. And uh, one thing that I wouldn't stress about right now is the interest rates, because interest rates are very high, but at some point they will come down to a more reasonable level, probably four or 5% is what they typically hover around. And so if you can make it work, your home with your finances at a seven or seven, seven and a half percent interest rate, then you can always get that home. If you like it, everything else about it is great. And then within a year or two or three, when interest rates inevitably come down, which they will, you can refinance and then you have uh, you know, a much lower payment and you have that great home that you were really excited to get. So that's kind of my advice for everybody who's in the market for a home right now. And that really wraps up the video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful and I hope the data really helped show you exactly what's happening in the market right now. So if you guys have any questions for me or wanna see me do any videos on anything else, make sure you let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to smash the like button and of course subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. And I will see you guys in the next one.